Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you and thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Canadian Club Chronicles 43 year old Canadian whiskey. Now the 43 year old uh, that we're looking at right here is bottled at 90 proof. It is mostly 43 year olds see because in the Canadian whiskey world they're allowed to add about 9% additives. So that's it. if it's sherry wine or other whiskeys aged at least two years of age so this one does contain some 11 year old rye but again no more than nine percent um, the other thing to note about it and how it came to be was you know canadian club they had a lot of this corn whiskey aging up many years i remember uh, the 30 year old came out i think late 90s early 2000s somewhere in there they had the 30 year old and that was the oldest Canadian whiskey for years and years. And then they started coming out with some older ones, especially in 2017 when the 40-year-old uh, Chronicles came out. Uh, that one, uh, I think, I can't remember if that one or the one after, 41 or 42. One of them had like cognac and sherry, and, and they were doing some fantastic things. But the thing to note about their barrels is, even though they're 100% corn whiskey, what they'll do is they'll top them off. So as barrels evaporate, and they start to get that headspace in the barrel, they'll take other barrels, full barrels, and they'll basically fill them, top them off, put the bung back in, and they'll let them sit. That, lets, that keeps the evaporation at bay, and it kind of makes them last longer. Now, the other flip side to that coin is you're in a colder climate, and you know, you're already not getting a lot of, I don't know, a lot of barrel influence happening because of the cooler climate, but now also because you're eliminating the headspace you're also kind of slowing that down so even though this is 43 years old it's not going to taste super heavily oaked or really over wooded like you would expect maybe a bourbon to be bourbon would never make it 43 years old you know the heaven hill 27 was one of the oldest ones the jefferson's 30 you know those were like anomalies that just rarely happen because they have to be on the center of the warehouse bottom floor really cool for a really long time and you're only going to get out you know 10 15 gallons something like that if you're lucky all right but canadian club it's the speakeasy the reason they called it that was because you know during prohibition uh, the speakeasy sold a lot of canadian club whiskey because that's what was being smuggled across most of the time um, the bottle itself is very beautiful it's pretty heavy nice heavy glass bottom base has a nice little canadian club crest um, etched into the glass it's pretty deeply too you can feel that so it's a nice little decanter bottle it does come in a nice little box a little I mean it is what it is it's a little dangerous because it has this magnetic closure on the back but when you go to pick them up sometimes that slip like that so you have to be careful with these boxes inside you have the bottle you have it in this little velvety brown bag with the golden Canadian Club emblem right there but let's go ahead and get to the taste See if I can pick up any of that rye whiskey, or is it really heavily focused on the 43-year-old corn? Wow, man, that's a good one. It's only 90 proof, but... Wow, how do I describe this one? This one is very... It has some light whiskey character to it, meaning it's heavy vanilla, heavy caramel, coconut, and then when that comes up a third, that's a good thing. Lots of shaved coconut. Vanilla bean. Toffee. Almonds. Little bit of a citrus oil. Think more orange. Maybe a hint of lemon. A little bit of fig. A little bit of date touch of cherry as well there's some straw going on on the nose as well dried straw but the corn sweetness is coming through which is vanilla and caramel all right let's go ahead and give it a taste 90 proof look at those legs very slow dripping Yeah, 
that is very much focused on the corn and um, that little bit of rye that they put in there it isn't enough for you to taste it and go oh that's right this is just heavy rye whiskey influence there's not it really did just kind of bump up the vibrancy of the spice component on the mid palate but up front when you first taste it you're going to be blown away by a the viscosity medium high viscosity um, the vanilla the caramel it's corn syrup um, you get all that and then the amount of toasted coconut that comes right after it to join it with the vanilla bean so if you like those three tasting profiles this is all full of it oh yeah the caramel and then when you focus right behind there you pick up a little bit of that ABV, the alcohol, but you're also picking up a little bit of the toffee, the caramel leading into chocolate, leading into a nuttiness. Pears. Mm, pears are on this one. Wow. And I would say if you want to get specific, Asian pears. If you had those big Asian pears, that's what's in there when they're ripe. That's in this one. But now that I'm more I'm tasting it, that caramel that's up front, it's almost butterscotch. It's butterscotch. So caramel, butterscotch together, that coconut, the vanilla bean. And then you start getting into that little bit of that pear and that little bit of the cherry tone. That's in there, but those other components are much bigger, much brighter. You get a little bit of spice swell on the mid palate, and it's kind of a combination of baking spices, Christmas spices, uh, the nutmeg, uh, the clove, and the cinnamon. Those are on the mid palate, chocolatey on the back end. Old, what would I describe that? Kind of like worn saddle leather and uh, dark chocolate on the finish. It's a very delicate whiskey, okay? Um, at $325, let's say. It's very unique, but the thing about it being so delicate is you really need to have this alone. If you're at a uh, tasting with a lot of other big, bold whiskeys, whatever, they're going to run probably right over this. But if you have this by itself after dinner, you just want to sit there and enjoy something, this is phenomenal because it's really going to show you a lot of special nuances that you're going to find other places. But again, I mean, the amount of coconut is still just going. But it's so, again, finesse. It's delicate. It's elegant. You don't find that a lot in a lot of whiskeys anymore. And so, even at $300, I think it's an experience. But again, could you get a cast strength bourbon to run over this? Yeah, pretty easily. But are you going to get the same nuances and experience? No way. So I hope you enjoyed this video review. If you're out there and you see these, um, I'll be honest. I found this bottle for about $200. So search around, ask around. Maybe if you see a store sitting on a few, see what they'll, you know, maybe they'll come down and give you a little discount on the price. We'll see. This store was just closing them out at $200, so I went in and picked one up. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video review. Uh, if you do, join me over at patreon.com slash liquorhound. You're going to get the review two weeks early, so you get that jump uh, head start on finding these bottles. You get videos ad-free and so on. Uh, but thank you all for being here, whether you're watching me on Patreon or YouTube. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Keep leaving all those great comments. Have a great day, and cheers.